Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Yaba, I ask that you please direct your attention to the crew in front of you as we review the emergency procedures. In case a worst fear happens and we start sinking, make sure you wear your life jacket properly by placing it over your head, putting the long strap around your back and then making a knot without forgetting to also tie the smaller strap by your chest as well. Notice your life jacket has reflectors and a whistle. Snorkel masks might drop down from above your seat. Place the mask over your eyes and nose, like this. Follow the procedure by putting the snorkel into your mouth. In the unlikely event of an emergency, the crew will start the safety pump. If pumping out 58,000 liters of water per hour is still not enough, everyone should get ready for evacuation. The life raft and the dinghy are both located between the masts. Besides all this scary information that we hope we don't need to use, try to sit back, relax and enjoy the journey. The Yaba crew thanks you for the attention and wishes you an unforgettable trip. Fair winds. Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm MP. We love the ocean, so we decided to make it our home by buying a massive wooden schooner, which is unfortunately sinking. A lot of people believe our boat is doomed, but we refuse to settle on that thought, and we are willing to do whatever it takes to bring it back to its former glory. Join us on this refurbishing journey, and wish us luck. Hmm. It's 4.20 a.m. You can't see your behind the back, but it's over there. And we are ready to leave. Hopefully, next time we touch land, it is we we're home. Home. And we'll get our boat fixed finally. We did the emergency lift before leaving, but we still have some leaks, so it still is. A it's to be a busy trip, checking yeah, the bilge, checking little. leaks, checking pumps, and okay. for the rest, I hope it flows nicely. Yeah, me too. Well, no water flows, but the trip flows nicely. So that guy behind me there is Marco. He came with us on the trip. He was very willing to help us out and he has an insane amount of knowledge and experience behind him. He's got tons and tons of years being a shrimp fisherman on a wooden boat. So he was the guy to help us on this trip. He knew anything about engines, wooden boats, pumps, leaks and whatnot. Not only that, he also knew the whole trip from the north to the south off by heart. So we were super grateful he came with us. He's a legend. Better than our last departure. And off we go! As our boat has problems, we had to really plan our trip. Even though we wanted to go as fast as possible in a straight line, at the same time we thought it was not a good idea to get that far from the coast. So that was our route. What's happening? It's my first time ever steering Yaba. How is it? Exciting. <laughs> Why are we going backwards? Hey!
have a look at the waterfall. During our travel, we found this strange stuff that looks like an algae on top of the water. We don't know what this is, but if you do, comment below because we're quite curious to find out. So we are now eight and a half hours in. Really? It feels like yeah, because we slept most of the time. We're staying close-ish to land. So we just saw a turtle. Time. True. But, but it was floating, so I don't think they were supposed to float. So. It was like huge. It was massive. I think it was there And yeah, we'll keep you updated about our trip. But for now, everything's going well. We're just using a 12 volt bilge pump, which is on a... And it's the smallest pump. So it's taking care of the problem. having a nap now but instead of cuddling me she's cuddling the boat I think she's found someone to replace me what's happening the rudder's not responding well So apparently I was trying to have a nap and I heard some noises so I got up really fast. We just did a 360 because the rudder got stuck. But I believe Ben just fixed it. We'll see. We are 11 hours in. You can still see land in the back. I decided to come and get some sun. Very windy, headwind, southeast wind. We would have rather have a northwest wind, but anyway. And P's still sleeping. I think everyone's catching some sleep that we missed this morning and that we're gonna lose tonight. The story about this plant. We planted the sweet potato on water the day we bought Yaba. And it started growing some very small leaves and now it looks this big. We know it cannot stay on water forever and it will need soil eventually. And our goal is to arrive in the south of Brazil before it dies. And I think we're gonna make it. Do you think we're gonna make it? Okay, I just went down into the engine room to find out that one of our alternator belts snapped. We have two luckily. If we stop the engine, will the engine start again? And if we let this backup belt running, will it also snap? Because it, it's running alone. Because it's running alone. And do we... I think our engine will start again. What do we do? Because if we manage to replace this belt immediately then the other one will last longer as well and we will make if the engine starts if the engine doesn't start 
start, the wind is against us, we can't really use our sails, and we are depend it's almost night time, so we are depending on our solar panels and our engine for battery power to power our pumps. So when the sun's down, the only thing powering our we have to change it. The only thing powering our batteries is the alternator. There's only one belt in it now. So let's do it. So let's do it. Excited? Okay. So let's stop this engine. something we didn't want After this, we'll need a tea and a biscuit as well. You can hear lots of water in our bilge now. That's because one of our frames was blocked, so I went to unblock it. Luckily, but unluckily, I found a broken alternator belt, and we now stopped the engine. We managed to swap it. Uh, we had to undo the cooling liquid hose to get the belt on so we lost all the liquid so I'm filling that up as well. We're gonna hopefully get the engine started soon and get all this water pumped out and I need some more water. The reason we're also doing this now and we decided to do it now is because it'll be dark later and you don't want to be floating in the sea without an engine or sails at night. It's a lot of water. I'm giving an engine a clean at the same time. Hoppa, there we go. Lid, please. So all these things that we loosened have to be nice and tight now because we don't want anything loosening during the trip. That can go back up. So, everything's finished. Next time you see me, we'll be starting the engine. It's like ignition. Okay. Key. Hold on, Mike. Battery. Our biggest fear. Okay, explaining everything. The, we had a clogged rib, so we came down the engine room to unclog it, and then we found out the alternator belt was ripped. We had to stop the engine to change the alternator vent because the alternator is what gives us battery for us to keep the pumps running during the night when the solar panels cannot work. So it was risky, but we had to do it. And we stopped, changed the belt, everything was fine, but when we tried to turn the engine back on, it wouldn't work. So now we are here touching the batteries and trying to get new batteries to turn the engine on because the other one is just bad. 
Oh ya. Vem da partida. Da, da partida. Vai. What's that noise? The engine! Marco helped us loads reconnecting batteries. MP's in the engine room. Orlando's helping in the engine room. Marco's in the engine room. Our sailor. But engine's running, alternator's running. I can turn lights back on and we can be on our way. What a relief. I was ready to get them. MP and I were almost going to start tipping water out in buckets. I should just so you can see where we are. See, see. We're in the middle of nowhere. So, we just got a little scared. We're well, right on time for sunset. We oh. managed to make the engine work again, and I'm so grateful. It's I'm been so called a drift. I've never been. Ah, I have been a drift before in Europe, but it's like night falling, boat and sinking, boat sinking. Now, and no pumps working. Being and a I, drift with a sinking boat is the worst. We were just trying to make the engine work, and I was just watching the water level going up. I was up, so up. sure the engine would have started after changing the belt. It's done. Our uh, marinheiro Marco saved the day. Thank you so much. Thank you forever. And it's not pleasant being in that. Ah, we also realize now being in the engine room is one thing, but being in the engine room in a stopped boat is just diesel, smoke, rubber, seawater. But now I don't want to complain. I'm just feeling so grateful. Anyway, let's sail off into the night. We should arrive halfway to at our halfway point tomorrow at around 9 or 10 a.m. Yeah. Let's hope nothing else breaks. No. Bye, son. See you tomorrow. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs> now it's night time and we started hearing a bend of the engine now the alternator making a noise so we had to stop the engine one more time to adjust the bend we're finishing adjusting now i think and then we have to try to turn the engine on again and we hope it works at the first try this time the se second time we're going to start this engine this time it's going to work fixing stuff but for the rest of the night just making sure the 12 volt pump doesn't get clogged because that would stop working and I feel like I just need a solid one hour sleep I can't imagine what those Vande Globe people must feel like after a race or during a race after such little sleep Welcome to the 
day two. <laughs> that was so loud. <laughs> Welcome to day two. It's now 8.45 a.m. Second day. Stuff's going well now. Last night was a bit stressful. Well, let's call it a bit complicated. But everything. But everything turned up, out right. Yeah. First one of the alternator belt snapped and the engine wouldn't start. Then we realized one of the how how did I what did I teach you? How do you know if there's a when belt loose? Sounds like a turkey inside the engine room. When there's a turkey in the engine room means when the belt's really loose. So we had to stop the engine again, tighten it, and the engine did start that time. Yeah. And then But it started overheating. Over, it was overheating, so we had to turn it off again. And the worst thing is to just float in the middle of nowhere without any momentum because the boat goes, it tips in every direction. Yeah. Voila! And then I had to just keep the pumps, 12 volt pump, clear from all the rubbish in our bilge. And it was blocking it the whole time. And yeah, now we have another, what, 85 miles? 85 miles, probably 18 hours. How do you think a person whose favorite color is blue is feeling right now? Might as well make the most of our board time while everything's going well in the engine room. With the sails, with the sea, look how calm it is. unrolled this sail and we've noticed that here it's nice and straight but it's wrapped around the back here so I'd like to hook it onto one of these but it's at the moment just using one of these flimsy little strings to attach the sail to the furler. So I'm going to use one of these to see if that works. The trick is to not drop it. was the reason of one of our biggest scares last night and the water was going higher and higher and higher so of course we thought we had a problem because the pump wouldn't stop to rest and the water level was not going down so we thought maybe a plank was loose and we we're getting more water inside so we got a bit nervous but the reason was we had so much dirt in the bilge that the pump was sucking more dirt than water and that's why it was stopped it was blocked and, yeah it was blocked so it was working on stuff because of that Ben cleaned it all, he took all this bowl of dirt and now the pump is working fine and resting again. Shouldn't you be steering? Yeah. The cheapest autopilot in the world. Look at these guys in for a free ride. You know, 
know what this thing is? Ben likes watching boobies. <laughs> I like boobies. <laughs> and I cannot lie. Oh no! I'm going into our last night. We should be arriving around 2 a.m. What are your thoughts? I'm feeling a bit nervous that the sun is setting and last night was a bit stressful so I'm feeling a bit scared. We've only changed two belts that drive the water pump, the cooling water and one that drives the alternator. They both have a old belt, there's always a backup. So they are very loose, we went down and we hope that the two old ones are going to hold. If they don't, they will. How's the seaweed? I'm gross and I like eating seaweed like this. It's our last sunset before the boat gets lifted. Farewell oh, sea. Boy. See you in a few months I hope. And treat us nicely tonight. How long still? I hope. Is it six, seven, eight, nine, seven, seven, eight hours. Hang I in there. I hope our eight hours are also calm because last night was a bit crazy. Let's do it. Quite an exciting moment for us. You can see our house from here. Well, kinda. Where those lights are. That's where we live. So this around us is the entrance of the marina of Itajaí. We're gonna follow the canal a bit to navigate shipyard where we're gonna stay so we've made it we've made it yes. it's been 45, 45 hours, hours. non-stop except for the times that the engine had problems and it had to stop stressful the sailing itself wasn't stressful it was the journey the worrying and the being alert yeah it's now what time 2 a.m. and we made it we made it. I want to say that I'm feeling very happy and very, very relieved. And I also want to say thank you thank to everyone you. who believed that we could make it here. And also thank you to the ones who didn't believe we could make it here because then you gave us strength and the right attitude to get ready for to this To not trip. get too comfortable. Yeah, so we got prepared for the worst, which we didn't need, but at least we had a safer trip. So thank you to everyone. I'd like to thank all our new patrons and also the people who have donated to our PayPal account. You guys are helping us out loads and we are really appreciating your support. So thank you very very much and also welcome to the Yaba family. Thank you Martin. Thank you Alan. And thanks Tim. Thank you Joni. Thank you Minerva. Thanks Ronald. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Joshua. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Ray and Rickard. Thanks, Java. And thank you for the donations. Tony. Simon. 
and Lezek. You. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video of our journey. We certainly did. <laughs> and we just wanted to make a quick disclaimer about everyone for you guys. So it is very, very good to follow your dreams and make crazy decisions. I think we did a made quite a crazy decision. But most importantly, safety comes first. We did buy a boat with some problems and we did cross the sea with a boat with problems. Yeah, that's true. So if somehow you were feeling inspired by that couple that you watched on YouTube that did a crazy trip but everything went all right and that's inspiring you, go for your dream, go for it. But remember that safety is also important. We might be always laughing and telling our story with smiles on our faces, but there's some stuff that we do take seriously. And our safety is one of them. So before the trip, there was a bunch of things we did. We made sure we had three carpent separate carpenters come and have a look at the boat before the trip. We had skippers come just to ask about the journey, ask about what the weather and the waves are typically like on our journey. Because of course, I had doubts about going south as well. So that's why we had professionals coming to help us with their opinions. And also, one more thing, we had lots of spare parts for the engine and whatnot, belts, pumps. So... Yeah, filters, belts, pumps. We had two 12 volt pumps, two 24 volt yeah. pumps, two 20 volt pumps. We had the emergency pump with gasoline, with enough yeah. gasoline for the whole trip. So yes, we took stuff seriously and that good but we didn't need any of that at the same time so make crazy decisions follow your dreams but keep it safe yeah